Hi there, welcome back to the Edmonton Business Coach YouTube channel at Inspired Method. And our topic for today is why role play is important. Here's a quick quote from Henry Ford. Be ready to revise any system, scrap any method, abandon any theory if the success of the job requires it. I just wrote a quote like that on LinkedIn today. Like, don't read, don't finish the book if it's boring. <laughs> Don't settle for less. That's basically what that's saying. Switch, figure what you need to get you where you want to go. Don't buy into that sunk cost fallacy. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Really good. Yeah. Now, here's a quick statistic from HubSpot, one of my favorite places to go for great information. Around three in four organizations use classroom training as their primary way to train salespeople. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. Here's a quick story for you. The best in the world train and get coaching. The best in the world train and get coaching. Yeah, I think athlete. Yeah, athletes. Every one of them. And not only athletes, but singers. Top businesses. And businesses, yes. Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook. They were all taught and trained and coached by one guy. We'll talk about him in another time, but they had the same coach. If there's a book out there, it's called The Trillion Dollar Coach. You should read it. Oh. Um, now, why should your team be any different if you expect to get top performing results? Mm -hmm. If it's good enough for the best in the world, it's good enough for you. So, Karen, what are some questions people might have about role playing? Okay, how do most people react when others are abrupt on the phone? Ooh, everybody loves getting on that oh. call, especially with, Fight. yeah, <laughs> er, er, you know, just getting angry and upset. And, you know, when someone else is salty on the other end of the phone, you're like, wow, um, I don't know what happened to you this morning on your drive in, or maybe you need some coffee or some happy pills, but wow, it's just very disturbing when someone's abrupt on the phone. It's just mm -hmm. not nice. Like, hello. I had somebody I was doing some cold calling the other week calling back some people from our business boot camp, and um, called them and this was how they answered the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and they came to our business boot camp of their front own free accord. Yeah, wow. exactly. And that's, that's cold, so man. Not, not the way to answer the phone. So I just put on a smile and said, hey, this is Trevor from Inspired Method Marketing and you First know, tip for you. <laughs> do you remember, you might have seen me at the business boot camp. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then it was, you know, Softer. different from there. Yeah. But don't answer the phone like that. Pretend you know that other person. Right? <laughs> Seems so logical. But the most logical things just go out the window because people get so caught up in their own thing. Yeah. So will most people react neg negatively if the tone is abrupt? Most people, yes. Oh, yeah. Most human beings will respond the same way. They will be a mirror of, of the way that you respond. Even the best people will respond negatively. True. Wow. That wasn't a slice or anything towards me now, was it? No, no, no. I meant myself. Oh. I'm the best people. Yeah, you're the best people, and sometimes I'm a little bit salty, that. right? Yeah. Some, you'll just sink to that you know, lower level for sure. That's right. So, anything else? Um, no, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I know. Again, logical, right? Why should you smile when on a phone call? When you smile on a phone call, people can pick up on the tone. I learned this the other day from one of the books I've been listening to, um, Never Split the Difference. Oh, yeah. Very good book. Mm -hmm. There is this uh, 73855 rule. 7% 7 of communication is what you say. 38% is how you say it, 55% is in your body language. Mm -hmm. And because you're on the phone, you can only get as high as 45% of what you're saying to another person to be picked up. So that is a big, big number. Even 38% is based on the tone, mm -hmm. the inflection, and people can hear if you're smiling on the phone or if you're not smiling on the phone. <laughs> That's a little dramatic. <laughs> So why is it that some companies are always good on the phone? Why is that? Well, they've probably come to the Edmonton Business Coach. <laughs> yes, they get coaching. And they've practiced, yes. right? They've been coached, 
they've practiced and they get better at it. So usually the companies that are the largest with the biggest teams, you'd think maybe the quality would suffer and go down, but no, those are the people that actually get it right because they train. Mm -hmm. they, they do it again and again until they get it right. Yeah. And they have somebody listening in on the calls to make sure that they're doing it right. Yeah. So, and if there's something that's going a bit off, they can, you know, stop them and say, hey, you know what? This is how you reacted in this call. Mm -hmm. Stick to the script, mm -hmm. go back to this and try that again, okay? So there's always the, the continuous coaching that's gonna help them. Yeah. Why is it ideal to have three people in that role playing together? Well, you can have two people, one person being the customer, the other person being the salesperson or the, the appointment keeper, and the another person being an objective bystander, just kind of listening to it and uh, tweaking the conversation as you go along. And, and everybody gets a turn to try mm -hmm. um, and feedback. make their critiques and get feedback, exactly, so that you've got more than one person you know, talking against the wall or a mirror, you know, uh, trying to yeah. uh, get good at your script. Have more than, than yeah. one set of ears. It's better than just the mirror. Yeah. So what if you don't have three? Is it okay to use friends and family? Yeah, for sure. You can definitely use friends and family if you, if you don't have those people to train with. Find a buddy online who is in a similar line of work and say, hey, you know, I want to practice my, my calls. Would you be willing to work with me and, and train together so we can both get better at this? Yeah. And you'll find you, there's people out there who'll be more than happy to do that with you. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So should the script be next to every phone? Yes. yes. You should put the script next to every phone so that no matter who is at the phone, whoever answers it, the script is there, they can follow it, they can go through it, and if they've been trained on it, they know how to handle every call and schedule those appointments for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. And should the way you handle objections be standardized? Yes. You don't want to go off script and, and go rogue uh, with every new call that comes in. There needs to be a set way of answering questions, dealing with stalls and objections. When people are calling in, getting, gathering information, have a, a set way to do it so that nothing gets missed. Right? If you are, if everybody answers the call differently, gathers different information, doesn't do the right thing with it, then you're going to have a mess and it's not scalable or sustainable. Yeah. And really there's only so many different responses you'll get. They're just said maybe a different way. So you can definitely standardize it and categorize yeah. it. And, and you always want to lead back to taking control of that call. That's getting right. Getting the information from them that you want. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they called you. Mm -hmm. So they want information. And the best way for you to give them that information is to have a standardized way to either get them in or get out to give them a quotation or something of that nature. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, they've called you. And you need to take control of that situation and get them the information they want the way that you deliver it, mm -hmm. not the way that they want it necessarily. Yeah. So should, a new, should you practice a new client inquiry scenario? Yeah, because that's, that's really an ideal situation. We have a new client who's, who's calling in and they want to you know, get on board with your company. Um, you don't want to be like acting like you don't uh, know. This has never happened before. Yeah, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do. Um, and they can tell. Yeah. Oh, they can tell. Like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Um, I don't know what to do here. I'm not sure um, where, where, who are you? What are you calling from? What is, how did you hear about us? You know, have yeah. a way to answer that call because <laughs> they're, <laughs> yeah, they're going to lose confidence in you if you don't have a system, a systemized way, is that the right word? Yeah. Systemized way to answer their questions or ask them proper questions. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it definitely takes some practice. I've been, you know, answering the phone for a long time, um, but there's still a lot of room for growth, a lot of room for improvement that I can make because it's not always fun, right? Yeah. It's fun when people call me and they're like, yeah, I, I, I'm looking for marketing help. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Well, where'd you hear about me? <laughs> where'd you hear about me? Tell your friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but making the outbound call is a little bit of a different story. It's a little bit more okay, I just have to realize these people can't hurt me. Worst they can do is hang up and then I'm just going to call them back till they 
cry, buy or die. <laughs> and that's just the, the long and short of it. So. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on YouTube, your Edmonton business coaches at Inspire Method Marketing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.